on the cloud for everybody. So I can officially now welcome you to our journey showcase here, and I'm so happy you guys were all able to make it. I'm going to switch my camera um, to the other one so you can see the instrument really well, and I'll probably bounce back and forth between both camera views. But, uh, boy, we're going to get into a lot of music today, and I wanted to kick it off with uh, one of the ones that I played the other day, um, and it's called You're the One That I Want. The name of the style is just called You're the One, but this is from uh, the show Grease. You're the one that I want from Greece. That's a really cool one. And I'm going to bump up the volume. Hopefully you can all hear me pretty clearly there. Um, so what's cool is that was uh, one of what we call the signature styles. And the journey here has a lot of them. And, of course, we won't be able to call uh, every single one up today. But I thought I'd start with that one because that one's a pretty cool one. And uh, I'm going to play another one for you. We're going to do a lot of playing songs today because that's what I love about showcasing these instruments is just showing how nice they sound. And even if you can't fully get the experience on, on, on Zoom, you know, through the online uh, experience that we have here, uh, I'll tell you that in person, the, it just sounds incredible. So if you have the opportunity to go to one of your local uh, Fletcher stores and hear it in person for a one-on-one -on -one demo, live and in person, that is the best way to hear this thing. And in the meantime, I'm going to make it sound as good as I can, and I'm probably getting the best show right here in person. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Here's another, to another tune for you. So the reason I wanted to play that one is because it's another signature style. So let me just read you off some of the names here of the 144 styles that are on the journey. 144. 
these are a couple of the signature styles. And how you'll know that it's a signature style is it sounds almost like the song that it's designed to go with. So, for example, there's one called Light Your Fire. So, if you're a Doors fan, I'm sure you know what that's for. Um, there's one called Smoky Water, Smoke on the Water, right? There's one called Sweet Home, Sweet Home Alabama. There's the one that I played, You're the One. There's, uh, gosh, there's so many here. I can't possibly go through them all. But anytime you see one that sounds like that, um, that's what that means. It means it's one of those signature styles. So you heard that on uh, My Girl, which that was called My Gal is the name of the style. You could hear that signature guitar part, right? Most people wouldn't know that if you're trying to play the uh, the song, wouldn't know how to play the... Right, but that's in the that's in the style. That's part of the signature arrangement. So you get the original studio musician there playing those those notes for you. So really, really good accompaniment. Okay, another thing you might have seen me do uh, during the middle of the song there, I touched a button right here. If you can see me pointing to it on the screen. Now I know we have a couple of fanfare owners. So what you guys might notice is that this instrument, the panel, looks virtually identical to the fanfare. I'm going to show you a couple of really big differences, okay? So for one, that button that I touched, okay, let me show you again what it actually did and then I'll explain it, okay? This is how the style comes on. Now watch when I touch this button here. Hear the drums change, the guitar changed. All right, here it is again. So that button on the fanfare is a different button, even though it's in the same spot. On the fanfare, you have what's called group two. That allows you to access a bunch of your other styles. Well, on the journey, that button has changed. It's a totally different function now. It's called alter style. And what does it do? Well, it quite literally alters the style, right? So when it started off like this, I knew that in the middle of the song, at the right time, I would touch alter style and it kicks in the rest of the band there perfect for the middle part of that song okay and that's true with a lot of them if I go to let's say uh, 50s guitar rock that's a style that you have okay on the fanfare on the easy 10 in fact on most of all the easy series sounds like this all right really good for rock around the clock or something like that check out what happens when I touch I'm gonna to put on a different sound here okay so this is what it sounds like with your drummer now watch when I touch alter style all of a sudden it goes from rock around the clock to Elvis here's Elvis How cool is that? That's the same style that you have, but if you add this alter style feature here, again, that starts off on the journey, you add that alter style in, it actually changes the style. So it's so cool because you get, it's almost like getting two styles in one. You know, for that one, you get Rock Around the Clock and you get Elvis. So I think that's really cool. Okay, that's a very important button. Now you might be thinking, if you have a fanfare, well, if that's replaced my group two, where did all my group two styles go? And that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So what happens that's a little bit different on the journey from the fanfare, and I know we have a, an Easy 10 owner, I think, on today as well, um, also different from the 10. Okay, when you touch standards, okay, that's the first button here on your music styles. Okay, so if you have an Easy 10, you have a style that's standards and full band that's called Frank and the Count. Okay, most everybody has heard that before. Okay, now if you have um, a fanfare, you also have group two, which would add another style. Okay, on the journey, this is really important. On the journey, every button that you touch up here for each of your performers has four music styles. So I'll say that again. Every button that you would touch up here, so standards, smooth, Broadway, Latin, ballad, any of those buttons, 
for each performer, full band, pianist, and guitarist, has four styles. So if I go to, oh, let's go to uh, Latin. Okay, so for Latin full band, if I look in my window here in the middle, my display window, I have four separate styles of music just on Latin full band. I have ballroom Latin, bossa nova, samba, and music to watch. So four styles. Now, still on Latin, if I touch pianist, I have another four styles. Okay, I have piano bossa, I have tango, I have mariachi, I have kind of hush. If I go to Latin guitarist, I have another four styles. So Latin guitar, trios romanticos, parrot buffet, and shooby doo bop day. So what that means is for each blue button here, traditional, gospel, Latin, etc., you have 12 orchestrated music styles. Okay, now what's really cool about that, they're all organized into these groups, right? Just like they are on all of our instruments. So you have Latin, you have ballads, you have rock, you have all those. And you know what, I think I'm gonna play just a little bit of this one because I saw this one, I really like this song. I, this is another one of those signature styles. Okay, and I, I mentioned this one under Latin pianist. And this one's called Kinda Hush Pop. Okay, so I bet you can guess, if you know the song, what the what one I'm going to play. Okay, the name of the style is called Kinda Hush, and here's the song. you like that one i just saw that one as i was browsing and i thought i'd play that because i like it um so like i said for each button that you have up here you have 12 music styles on the journey okay and uh they're, they're split up between four on your full band four on the pianist and four on the guitarist and i think sean is showing you the full music style table there okay but what might happen is you might be taking one of these uh, online classes or you might have an in-person help session at the store or you might be going back through an old book and you see, okay, they wrote one particular music style that you wanted to check out. You wanted to try this particular style and you're not sure. You know, sometimes it's obvious. If it's a country song, it's probably under country. If it's a Latin song, it's under Latin. But maybe some of them you're like, well, is it under traditional? Is it under pop? Is it under mix? Now you could just look through all the buttons there, but that's a little time consuming. One thing that the journey adds that's really handy, now this is a top of the line feature, okay, that's normally only on the huge instruments. And this is not a huge instrument. This is just a huge sound on a, on a fairly mid-sized instrument, okay? But this feature, if you go into your feature menu, you'll scroll a little bit and you'll see one that says style list, okay? There's a bunch of options in there, but style list is one of them. Now, as you can probably guess, it's just a, an alphabetical listing of all your styles. So if I wanted to play, let's say, um, oh, I don't know, maybe a style, you know, unforgotten, okay? Unforgotten is for unforgettable. Now, that could be in ballad. That might even be in traditional. Could be in maybe even pop, smooth. I don't know. So if you don't have your style table on there, what you can do is scroll right through and I'm going to go to the use and look at, there it is, unforgotten. And then I just touch select and then it's set up to play.
I got to only play a couple measures or else we'll end up playing the whole thing. We'll be here That's all night. Beautiful style. I love that. It one. really is a beautiful style. That's another one of those kind of signature ones, right? So, um, but that style list feature is really handy because you may not, especially if you get a new instrument, you know, that's one of the fun parts is going around and exploring and trying to find where all the styles are. But you may not want to look forever. You may just want to go through your list and say, oh, I remember he said uh, that one's supposed to be played with bandstand. There's bandstand. Or that one I was supposed to use cat memories. And there's cat memories or candelabra piano. There's so many good ones on here. So I also want to mention, uh, you know, those of you who have seen me do a, uh, a class or, or a workshop or a showcase like this, I like to spend most of my time talking about two things, which is the styles and the sounds. Okay, now the instrument like this is going to have so many features to cover it in one session is impossible. So I just like to pick some of my favorites. And again, starting off almost always with the styles and the sounds. And by the sounds, what I mean are your melody sounds. Now on the Easy 10 and on the Fanfare, you have style setups in the middle. And hopefully you know what those are, but those are going to give you the different melody sounds. In this case, one sound for the upper keyboard, another sound for the lower keyboard for any style music that you pick. So since most people have these already, I don't want to spend too much time talking about just the style setups, but I did want to make sure that you know you have eight buttons in here, okay, numbers one through eight, and then you have setup zero. And what that means is that for any style that you pick, you're going to get nine sounds, which is, you know, again, zero plus one through eight, nine sounds for the upper, nine sounds for the lower. So that means that for the journey, you get 18 melody sounds that are already selected without you having to do any work. Now, most people can find at least a handful of sounds that they like out of those original 18. However, if you want to go above and beyond, there's also what they call category setups. Category setups are similar because you're going to use them for melody sounds using your numbers 1 through 8, okay, or 0 through 8. But what they do is they don't change. So if I were to touch something like Jazz Swing, okay, I'm just going to put on the easy button here without a style. I'm going to get all different types of jazz or swing instruments. Clarinet, trombone, flugelhorn, flute, vibes, um, organ, saxophones, brass, all these great sounds. Now there's a, a key button over here that says more. Now whenever you see a button on your instrument, no matter what you have, if it says more, you want to make sure that you touch it and explore it. Reason being, um, when you touch that, no matter what kind of more it is, it means that, you know what, they ran out of room on the panel. They just don't have room enough to put so many hundreds of, of buttons all over the place. So when you see a button that says more, that means that you have more options than are just on the panel. Okay, in this case, what I mean by that is that for your category setups, here you have an option that says symphonic. If I go to the next one, it says jazz swing. If I go to the next one, it says country. So each one of those is going to give me great sounds for those genres of music. But if I touch more, I get another three that pop up in the screen. I get modern, Latin, and nostalgic. And I just want to take you on a brief tour of the nostalgic sounds because I, I think these, this is one of the best categories. Again, this is pulled from the top of the line instruments. So nostalgic, I always remember it as being the name category. Now, what do I mean by the name category? If you go through the sounds, what you're going to see are a bunch of names. And hopefully you recognize some of them. Starting off with Louis A., Louis Armstrong, right? Harry and Benny. Tommy and Jimmy, right? The Dorsey brothers. You got Awesome Organ. Awesome is for Dennis Awe. So I'm just going to go through and play some of these sounds for you. This is just with the easy button. This is the nostalgic category.
I got to pause in the middle here so I make sure to tell you what this is. This is one of my favorite ones. This is Nostalgic Number 4. And this one you have a Stradivarius violin on the top and the cello on the bottom. Now listen to how pretty this is. This is the best violin and cello sounds you'll ever hear that don't come an act from an actual violin or a cello. Check this out. Isn't that pretty? Just gives me goosebumps every time I play that. And there's other ones in there too. There's the doggy in the window. <laughs> All right, you can scare the dogs or the cats in your neighborhood. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going to stop there for that. But I mean, just in the categories, just know that there are tons and tons of great sounds in the journey. There's a total of six different categories, each one containing those nine setups. So somebody can do the math on that. But there's a lot of good sounds in there, and those don't change. So unlike your regular style setups, which do change for each style that you pick, categories do not change, and they give you all those good sounds, whether you want to play with just the easy button or with the music style. Okay. Another thing I wanted to mention here is that uh, this is an instrument that has a really cool, what I would call a teacher feature. It has actually a number of them, but the one I wanted to mention was it has 60 built-in songs, which is, out of all the instruments, the most amount of built-in music that they make. Okay, so if I touch the button right here in the middle that says songs, I'm going to get a total of 60 songs that I can pick from. Okay, so there's stuff like Happy Together, My Heart Will Go On, YMCA, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, Let's do, uh, oh, this is a fun one, Daydream Believer. So all I do is touch select, and it's going to play the song. Okay, so that's really good if you're playing with your Lowry Magic books. That's going to be the first six books. Okay, so all of your red books and the first two blue books. And as a bonus, if you scroll through here and you're looking uh, at songs and you get to number 60 and then you keep going and it says your song one, your song two, your song three. Well, what that means is there's a total of 20 slots onto which you can record your own music. So I'm not going to do the whole thing on how to record your own uh, songs, but what, what you can do, just know that there are 20 different spaces where if you hit your music recorder, and you don't have to have anything extra, you don't have to have a disc or a stick or anything like that, this is all just internally on the instrument. If you record yourself playing, you can have a 20 song album of just you playing your music right on the instrument. So I think that's really cool. Okay. So I'm going to play another song here for you. Let's see, which one do we want to do? Oh, i got to play you this one. This is one of my favorites, too. Uh, I can't remember which instrument this first came out on, but I bet Sean would know. If you're there, Sean, Nolan's Pianist. Do you know which one that came out on first? I was going to say maybe the, the Liberty. That was on the Liberty. Yeah, that's the Liberty? that came out, which so, I think that was, what, 79, Yeah, that was a, almost an $80,000 instrument. And uh, this is an $80,000 style, I'm telling you. This is called Nolan's Pianist. And so if you picture somebody at a, at a piano bar in New Orleans, I mean, you can just see the image, okay? And I'm going to hit my intro here. Um, I also have to admit that I have a, somewhat of a bias towards the piano styles. That's, I grew up playing piano since I was five, and this style of music is just kind of a cool, laid-back piano bar type thing. So check this out, Nolan's Pianist. And in, in the middle of this song here, I'm going to actually bring in the drummer, too. So you can add in some drums by using your setups. But we're going to start off just with the piano player.
Very cool, very cool style. And one thing you might have noticed is as I was playing that, there were these huge, cool piano fill-ins that I wasn't doing. Here's just the regular style. Now if I do my fill-in, listen to this. Oh, that was just the tail end. There it is. Now that's pretty neat. That was just the regular fill-in. I was using my foot switch there. Um, another thing, this actually uh, popped up automatically. And now what you might notice uh, on some of the instruments, including this one, sometimes the keyboard touch will come on. And what keyboard touch means is that if I strike the key a little bit harder, I get a louder sound. And if I touch it softer, you might not even be able to hear that on the, on the zoom there, but it's very, very soft. Now, I kind of prefer that because it is more authentic to playing piano. However, a lot of our students don't like that. And there's a really nice button that starts uh, first on the fanfare and then also on the journey here. And they put it right on the panel that says keyboard touch. So if I don't want that, which I know a lot of our students don't like having the keyboard touch on, they just want everything to be uniform throughout the whole thing, no matter how hard or soft they touch the keys, I can turn that off. And now, it doesn't matter if I touch it hard or as soft as I can, it's going to be the same volume the whole time. So having that right on the panel is a really handy feature, right on the panel there. Um, another great one, actually, I hadn't planned on mentioning this, but another great one is right here, and that's the tap tempo feature. Now the tap tempo, also right here on the panel, is great because if you want to speed up or slow down a style, you know, most of the time for, for our students, you're not going to play the style at the same exact tempo that it comes on. Now you can just scroll through, you can use your tempo buttons, but if you ever thought to yourself, if you're kind of snapping your fingers, okay, I want to play it about that fast, right? All you have to do is just pretend you're snapping your fingers, but you tap the button and it automatically takes you to whatever speed you're at. So, for example, if I was playing a faster style, let's go to Broadway, because Broadway styles come up real fast. Okay. Okay, and I think, man, that is way too fast. I think I, I can only play it about this fast. And with just a couple of clicks there, it's down at my speed. And if you think, well, maybe a little bit slower, you know, wherever you want to put it, it'll be right there. Lots of, lots of handy features right on the panel. You know, I don't have time to go over every single one, but you got your transpose right here on the panel. You've got your balance feature right here on the panel. That is if you want more of the accompaniment or more of the melody. So that's what I, I, one of the things I really like about this instrument is it doesn't seem like it's got a really busy panel. In other words, there's not too many buttons, but there's a lot of stuff that you would actually use right here available on the panel for you. Um, does anybody have any questions? I got a couple other things I wanted to mention before uh, before I turn it over to Robert here. But if anybody has any questions, make sure you flag us down. All, All right. Great I stuff. See, don't see any hands raised there. So just a couple other things I wanted to mention here. Um, on the far right side, which may be a little bit hard for you to see, but one of the things that's really cool is this does have an input. So if you have a smartphone or an iPad or something like that that you want to plug in, you can actually connect that with the little uh, output or the sorry the input over here, and uh, you can play all of your music. You know whether you watch uh, YouTube or you have, you know Apple Music or Google, I don't know what they call it, the Google Play or whatever that is, um, or Spotify or Pandora, anything that you have on your smart device, you can play, and instead of having to listen to it on the on the phone speakers, which that's one of my big pet peeves. I just hate listening to good music on these little phone speakers that don't do it justice. Well, you can have it come through this beautiful speaker system, have it sound like a million bucks just by connecting it there. Of course, you have your regular headphone jack. It also does have a mic input. So if you want to do uh, karaoke or something like that, you can plug in a mic. Um, and then as we move over this way, we have our harmony. Now, harmony is really important. Uh, hope, hopefully, everybody knows what harmony does. But on the journey here, you have eight different harmonies. Okay, so just a real quick, uh, real quick thing on what harmony actually does. If I don't have harmony on and I play one note, I get one note. 
Now, if I turn harmony on, and we'll put on a big, nice, nice harmony here, and I play one note, now I get multiple notes. Okay, so you can actually get a huge full sound by only playing one note. And then there's also a button right next to your purple harmony button here that says lock. And what the lock does is it allows you to keep that harmony. So if you're playing, let's say you're playing uh, Spanish Eyes or something, and you want duet harmony. I just picked one, but you could pick any harmony. Okay, I, if I select duet harmony and then I hit lock, now every single one of my setups here, no matter what I pick, category setups, style setup, anything, will have duet harmony. So that's kind of neat, I think. Um, and if you happen to be somebody, I don't know if we have any real advanced players, but sometimes we get people who play more than one note in the right hand. If you're one of those people, you may not want harmony to come on. So if you turn your harmony off and then touch lock, then no matter what setup I pick, I won't get any harmony. Now that's going to be for the more advanced players, but I just wanted to let you know that you can do that if you want. Uh, more likely, you're going to think, oh man, you know what? I was going through all these new harmony options that I got, and oh, block harmony. Whew, I fell in love with block harmony. And you just want that for every setup that you're going to play for whatever song you pick. You just go to block harmony, and then you click the lock. Okay? And to highlight one of these cool kinds of harmony, I wanted to play another style for you. This is uh, under your country pianist. And remember, I wanted to recap that when I touch country pianist, I actually get four styles in the window. Four styles. So this one is called Floyd Piano. Now listen to the harmony. And if you can see my finger up here, I'm going to just play one note. But listen to it plays exactly the harmony that Floyd would have used, Floyd Kramer. Okay? So here we go. Now, who would have thought that using only one finger in your right hand, you could sound just like Floyd Kramer? I think that's pretty neat. And again, if you really like that harmony, you think, man, that harmony, I'd like it to be on guitar, or I'd like that to be on whatever else I'm going to play, just touch harmony lock. Everything locks in there. Okay, very, very cool. And I think I will wrap it up with one more little uh, tune here. And what I'm going to do in the middle is I'm going to touch a button way off here to the left. And there's a picture of a harp right by it. And the feature is actually called Golden Harp. Okay, so the style that I'm going to play for you is, again, one of my favorites. That's one of the things I love about playing these showcases and the concerts and all that is I, instead of getting a, a list of you need to do this, 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 and this, like you, need, like you get at a wedding, if you ever played at a wedding, you get this list. Okay, you got to do this at this time, this at this time. Well, when I do this here, I just get to play all my favorite styles. So another one here that I really like is called Strings 101. Again, another one of those styles that came from the higher end instruments. Beautiful for ballads and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do, though, is in, in the middle here, you'll see me reach up and touch this button over here called Golden Harp. And when, that, when, when I touch that, it's going to activate what we call an arpeggio, meaning it plays notes from the bottom all the way up and then all the way back down. Just adds in a really cool kind of extra part to the background. Okay, so here we go. This is Strings 101 plus the Golden Harp.
You hear that harp? Isn't that so cool? And yeah, you can use that without the styles, too. You can use that without the styles. Check this out. If I just touch that, um, just the easy button, let's say I was going to play that, uh, that, what was I doing? Uh, did Ava Maria earlier with those uh, nostalgic sounds. Remember that? So if I put on my nostalgic number four, put in that beautiful violin, and then I can add in the golden harp. Really, really pretty. Heavenly. And anytime you're looking for that cool arpeggio, all you have to do is touch that golden harp. Heavenly. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Robert for a minute. Robert, are you there? I am. That was so good. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. That was so heavenly. Well, thank well, you. Well, can you play one more when I'm done talking? Oh, I suppose I can. I think I can they'd rather more. hear... Uh, something on an to, on an end note musical than my talking. I just got a tooth pulled and I have a uh, flipper. Is that what they call it? That I, have oh. a, that I have to have done. Yeah. And I feel like I'm talking really funny. So uh, remember the old people when people used to make fun of Mike Tyson the way that's why I feel like I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say like, what I feel like you wouldn't have noticed unless you mentioned it. Now I'm Ludacris, noticing Ludacris. I'm sorry. It's annoying, but uh, I'll get used to it. Anyway, um, but thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation so far and the demonstration that uh, um, uh, Brian does. I just, I just love the way he presents the product. Um, he's absolutely the, one of the best uh, uh, journey demonstrators uh, next to uh, Sean, right? Sean? <laughs> No. You betcha, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but what I do want to tell you is uh, we, we do have a unique opportunity um, uh, for the journey but simply because uh, I did the, uh, I did an inventory. Um, we are actually down to, I think, three journeys left all in, uh, in the entire company. <laughs> and I think they're all in Florida, if I'm not mistaken, but we got some inventory exchanges that's getting ready to happen um, between the two states. I got a bunch of organs that I go to back to Florida and I'll see if I can get a few to, from Florida to here. But what I do want to tell you is that Fourth of July weekend, we presented four different instruments. We had uh, the artists perform on the Freedom Three, the Inspire, the Legend, and then the Journey. And they just highlighted a couple fun songs on those on those instruments and um, uh, it was part of our 4th of July celebration if you will and what we did was a different type of sale we normally would do usually we do a 4th of July celebration like all retailers but rather than doing a sale on all of our inventory and 10% off what we did is we took all of the savings that we would normally do on that sale and put them into four models and, and increase the savings amount on those four instruments and since that time we have had many many happy uh, new uh, organ owners and uh, I would say a lot of organs got adopted since Friday and we have a few journeys that are looking for homes that need to be adopted um, not to worry your trade-ins will will have a will have a nice safe home for those organs as well but long story short we have some phenomenal opportunities I'm gonna uh, uh, encourage you strongly encourage you to at least find out what the what the staff members are doing uh, and this is all still part of our uh, two three month plan to uh, continually fund our music club activities and online classes and what have you uh, and our way to say thank you we think for your loyalty and all that you've done uh, and being a part of a, a, you know keeping the hobby of music making and the recreation of music making alive our best way to say thank you is to make sure that we can put you uh, in the driver's seat as far as getting the journey at a, a very, very affordable price point. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Um, All right. We'll off with one last number there. And I got to mention one more thing. I can't, I almost went the whole time without talking about this and it may be my single favorite thing that doesn't have to do directly with the sound of the instrument. 
And that's, if I pull my camera back up here a little bit, this has the widest music rack of any instrument. So check this out. I have four sheets of paper up here, and there's still plenty of room left. Now, if you ever put your books up there and they're falling off to one side or you got to turn the page and it's sliding this way, that won't happen on this unless you're playing a 40-page uh, you know, <laughs> orchestral piece. So plenty of room for your music. So I just wanted to mention that. That's one of my favorite things on this instrument. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up here with another one of these signature styles. Um, I do appreciate everybody hanging out this afternoon and uh, checking out the wonderful, wonderful Lowry journey. This is one uh, that you'll find under your gospel button, but it isn't really a gospel song. It's called Stand By Me, and the name of the style, is, or sorry, the name of the music style is called Stand By You. So hopefully you enjoy this one. Just like the original. I love that. They did a really, really good job. So uh, I'm going to switch back to my other camera here just to bid everybody farewell. Um, and while I do that, I want to make sure that I mention real quick all the stuff that I talked about in case you want to get with your local staff. So make sure, okay, that if you have any questions, contact your local Fletcher store member and make sure you ask, because I talked about a lot of stuff, right? We talked about the styles, 144 on the uh, journey here, which is actually, if you're coming from a fanfare, twice the styles, right? Because it adds, instead of two, you have four, right? Four on the screen per button. We talked about uh, the style list in your feature menu. We talked about 60 built-in songs, um, your golden harp, your categories. Oh, my gosh, the categories. Six groups of category presets. Your tap tempo on the panel, keyboard touch on the panel, uh, your stereo input with the microphone, your eight types of harmony and the harmony lock. I'm sure there was a lot more, but make alter sure. Style. Oh, that your alter style button yeah. too. Yeah, alter style switches the style um, to something sometimes completely different, right? We did the rock around the clock to Elvis, right? Two totally different styles. So there's so much. And really, if you know these instruments, that's just scratching the surface of all the stuff that this thing can do. So really, if you have any questions, make sure you get with your local staff members and, uh, and talk with them about um, whatever, you, whatever you come up with. Okay? Thank you. All righty. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you, hopefully, on our variety classes this week. Thank you, Brian. Good job. We'll see you all soon. Take care.